Welcome to the R video tutorial on stem and leaf plots. This is part of Statistics 321 at Virginia Commonwealth University. Let's get started. All right, we're going to be continuing on using the Cycler CPK data. It's been used in previous videos, and I want to keep using it because you don't have to keep downloading data and keep trying. We can keep using the same one over and over again to illustrate the ideas. All right, so let's read this in and make sure everything reads in fine. Notice everything read in fine, pretty easy. Um, stem and leaf plots are really easy to create in R. All we have to do is use the stem function, and the plot comes out in a different place than what you're used to uh, from what we've done so far. So we just put stem here. I'm going to put cycler1, and I'm going to put in here CPK1, and we can just run it, and you'll see what happens. So I've ran this and noticed nothing shows up over here where the plots are because this is an older function before plotting was quite common. And here's what you get. So you get this stem and leaf plot, which actually is the data uh, plotted out in a standardized format so that you can actually see the values. So here you can see the lowest value is 9 has a nine but the stem is two so and it says the decimal point is two digits to the right of the bar okay so this would be there was a point two nine uh, there was a or a 200 actually this is the the two digit is two digits to the right of the bar okay so there would be like a 290 something a 300 a 310 a 320 uh, there's nobody in the 320 to 400 range. There's a 400, there's a 467, uh, a 520, there's a 590. And you can see these are two digits out, so each one of these is in the hundreds. And if you want to look at the data, you can to just see what it looks like, uh, just in case you've forgotten. So we do cycler one, CPK one, and you can see these are the numbers and it's turned these numbers into the stem and leaf. So this one's kind of nice because the 700s are right there um, and it makes it just easy to look at. So we have this information here and it's done a little bit of rounding, of course, but everything looks good. Now the important thing to do is to actually comment the, on what you see and the legend is important so i'm going to copy this here and i'm going to paste it into my console why because in this case i can actually paste the answer in so why not and then i can comment it out uh using a function in r so you just highlight all this if you go up under code you can't see my toolbar here but if you go under code you will see in here comment uncomment I hit comment and it puts the comments in and it puts a little weirdness as well because some of these have too many spaces. Uh, but you can make it look good and then you can actually write comments about what you see. And in terms of this, this data is kind of weird. So what would I see? Well, I'm going to be looking for the shape and this thing is clearly not a very nice data set. It's probably actually trimodal. Uh, so I'm going to say it's trimodal. It's at least bimodal. Uh, let's see where the center is. So the center on this thing, and there were 40 observations if you look over here. So you can actually come down and kind of find out where it would be by just counting it off. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So it's somewhere between 470 something and 520. So I'm going to say the this kind of around 500 uh, is, so I'm going to put here about 500 because we're estimating, remember, we don't have the actual data. Uh, the spread of this is goes from... Let's see, what's the smallest number? It was, what, 290? So 290, 
to it looks like 740 something so i'm gonna put 740 and you can subtract those if you want to get the range and is there any un unusual features and yes there is there is a gap between uh 320 to 400 there are no observations at all and that, that makes things a little awkward and a little odd looking and the shape is kind of odd too but that's the big thing is there clearly is a gap here now you want to make sure that you always comment about what you see in the picture it's not enough just to make a picture i i don't care who you work for or what class you're in however you're doing this People want you to turn the data into knowledge, and that knowledge is about the underlying process that generated this data. So people want to know this information, and that's your job is to help them determine this information. While a picture is good, it's better if it's interpreted because then there's less guessing. All right, so this has been the R-Video tutorial on stem and leaf plots, and we're off to box plots next.